Hi, very good morning all. Uh, welcome to the day two technical session uh, of advanced performance engineering. Very good morning all of you and greetings. Today, uh, as part of uh, the performance engineer uh, technical demo session, right, we are going to talk about uh, common performance problems. And when we are talking about common performance problems, right, it refers to all the problems that we see during the load test execution, be it any environment, be it any technology, Java, .NET, anything. The problems that we see from uh, web layer, app layer, uh, database layer, problems that are happening from different different areas of your architecture, all these things we are going to talk. And in specific to that, today I would like to highlight some of the Java application performance problems uh, that are most commonly seen by everyone of us in day-to-day -day assignments. Okay. And uh, in Java application performance degradations and problems, when we are testing any Java application, there is something called JVM, where you can have one to many instances of JVM in multiple application servers you have. It can be anything, uh, IBM, Oracle, JVM, uh, in multiple uh, application servers like uh, Apache Tomcat, you can see WebLogic, WebSphere, different, different application servers, right? When I say JVM, JVM has different monitoring levels. Okay, what is what is the type of monitoring that we have to do? What are the areas that you need to look at? And finally, we are going to talk about the analysis and troubleshooting part. Okay. So <clears throat> coming to the common performance problems, right? Uh, if you have attended my any of the previous sessions, we always used to talk about uh, the common performance problems. I would say they are not completely common from all the different different uh, applications that we are testing. They are sometimes they are specific to the type of technology that you are using. Okay, so uh, if you have attended any of my previous sessions, there is something called eighty twenty rule. Okay, so you always need to remember this point. Eighty twenty rule is nothing but eighty percent of the performance bottlenecks they do happen just because of twenty percent of inefficient code. Okay, so if you take any performance testing assignment, if you take the development team, development team, they skip something called code profiling. Okay, when you don't code, code profiling and code, code optimization from the very early stages of development life cycle, as soon as a service is ready, as soon as a module is ready, as soon as a page is developed, right? When this code profiling is skipped from the development team, it is already skipped from many of the organizations and many of the teams. It will become the responsibility of the performance engineers to profile the code. Okay, I'll tell you why. If you don't profile the code, 80% of the bottlenecks, they exist and they remain open. Even if you are doing continuous testing on multiple releases and working in agile sprint methodologies. Okay, so when you ask the developers to do something called code profiler, most of the teams, they feel this profiling thing as an extra piece of work and they skip it. If you go back and see all your projects who have joined today, the question to all of you is, how many of the applications are really doing code profiling? So I'll tell you, I'll tell you the importance of code profiling and what is the use of doing code profiling. It is always difficult to implement a fix on every single function method or a class or an object that is creating a performance degradation because a particular fix can also bring some new performance problems on the other uh, existing functionalities which are already working fine. So some sort of regression, some sort of understanding here is very crucial uh, to identify what are all the areas that has to be fixed, what are all the areas are uh, that has to be still remain open for the few upcoming releases just because to avoid new bottlenecks, we have to do code profiling and we have to work on all the different different aspects. And also coming to the other point, when I am referring to common performance testing problems, right? Whenever someone is doing performance testing, most of the problems they you, you get from client side and with server side, you may get some performance problems from the network side because of network congestion. Okay, you might get some problems because of latency. And again, under latency, you are going to have serialization delay, propagation delay, and you're going to have jitter. Jitter is nothing but uh, the latency variance that you're seeing, right? So all these things can happen. When I say client-side server side, 
when we are specifically dealing with server side right especially with the application server we are main worried about the memory related areas out of memory out of memory errors memory leaks deadlocks resource contentions high resource utilizations connection drops lot of things can be seen di in different levels so if you consider our point 50 to 20 percent of the bottlenecks they happen from uh, web server 25 to 30 percent of the problems they happen from the application server and all other remaining 50 percent of the bottlenecks they happen from database server for example whenever you send a request is it one re one hit or multiple hits? anyone you multiple requests right so uh, if you take any simple application sim simple web application uh, I, I would like to give you uh, this particular thing. Uh, just a uh, minute. So you have to you have you should have this level of understanding. Uh, if you see this diagram, okay, S simple uh, simple get customer details, okay. When you send a request here. This is one hit on the web server. This is two hit on the web server. I mean, second hit. You have two hits on the web server, two hits on the application server, and two hits on the database server. You can clearly see that when you send a request, okay, uh, it is sending two HTTP requests onto the web server, one for the core page, which is a Java server page, JSP, and one for the image itself. Okay, these are two HTTP requests triggered on the web server. And if you take application server, there will be two methods that are being executed, invoked on the application server. When it comes to the database server, there will be two SQL queries that will be running on it and it is going to bring the response. So from everywhere, you are going to get some sort of response when HTTP request is executed here on the web server, when a method is executed on the application server, and when a SQL query is executed on the database server, the total time that you have here is called a round trip time. Okay. You also, when whenever you get the NFRs, you also have a target estimation where when you where you are sending a request, the overall target would be explained like this. The overall target of the application can be three seconds, where the time it has to spend from web to app, sorry, a DB to app or app to DB should be less than one second or app to web server, web to app server should be less than one second. The, the remaining one second should spend on all the other uh, processing parameters. It could be uh, touching some API servers, file servers, or whatever it is. The complete processing, executing uh, uh, logic implementation has to happen within that one second. So, so this is called target estimation. So when I say this particular, when I explain this particular scenario, when I'm referring to common performance problems, you always get a problem with uh, a database, which means that PJ, uh, pages which has to load data from backend database. When I say backend database, every request when you're sending to the database, each request has to send to the database and it has to pull a data set. That data set can be small or it can be moderate or it can be in big sizes. Even for the request that you are sending, right? Request will have some message and that message will have some size. Okay. For example, 50 KB example, I'm saying we have some standard parameters. Each request that you are sending will have some message in it and each message would be having a size for that. So every request that is actually creating some activity on the web app db servers would have some size and that size is something which will help you to create the size of web server application server and database server okay and mike will talk about the questions in the last because we have 15 sessions uh, we have 15 minutes in the last okay uh, we'll keep this uh, questions open you can make a note of your question we'll address that Okay, when I say pages which load data from a backend database, there can be numerous reasons why your application can be slow, why your system can be slow. 
okay why your server can be slow so there there can be wide number of reasons that that can create a performance problems when loading the data from a database example yesterday someone asked me how do you troubleshoot how do you identify uh, or how do you conclude this is a complete database problem so we need to look at some tens of metrics sometimes hundreds of metrics we need to correlate them and interpret them compare them with other test execution runs and as well as with other metrics to see what value is increasing with what if you take a specific database they can have inefficient or unnecessary table locking if you have a bad cache mechanism implemented which is also called improper caching and you already know there are long running queries which are uh, high load sql statements badly performed queries okay you have io peak periods you have high resource utilizations and lack of badly used indexing which is also called missing indexes we will not talk about all the basics now because we have extensive database performance engineering session in this program where we are teaching everything there right from the basics what is dml what is ddl what is select everything we are going to teach that so these things are not they cannot be easily identified okay so when i say the common performance problems my first suspect would be always primarily the database okay then i come back to application server to see how the memory utilization is happening how the uh, resource contention is happening what is the reason for deadlock i look at the stack traces i look at the connection limit i look at the, the thread pool connection pools lot of other parameters and coming to the client said recently many of the assignments they are not uh, being evaluated with something called client side performance testing so when i say client side performance testing all the page assets uh, and other assets that you are uh, seeing from be it static be it dynamic uh, if they are available in cache and not available in cache so if the pages are not optimized if the page assets from the client side are not optimized you will see a performance degradation so according to the recent surveys uh, that has been happened by multiple vendors on the client side performance testing 50 to 80% of the bottlenecks degradations are directly from the client side that is why the reason uh, in parallel with development we are doing something called early performance testing and client side performance testing to eliminate the bottlenecks at the very early stages of your application development so that you don't see high response times high resource utilizations when you take that application to end to end performance testing so when you are testing with 10000 users 15000 users for it as well as you half of the performance degradations will be optimized at the very early stages if you are doing early performance testing testing a web service as soon as it is ready baselining benchmarking doing client side performance testing so the number of images assets on a page will have a significant impact on the response times if you take amazon flipkart any e-commerce site it has to bring thousands of images of all the products okay each image that you are bringing onto the screen can mean one http request example if you are accessing a searching a product it is bringing 15 images on that product more number of images can mean more http requests with each one requiring a round trip time to the server okay so for that reason in client side performance testing what we do is we compress the images properly we take care of the size of each image and we optimize the performance that is one example on the page assets if you have javascript calls they are they are getting minified for example if you have a, a javascript call which is taking so much of time there are uh, minifier if you take minifier if you click on problem if you collect the problematic javascript and css if you go to minify like the way you do heap dump analysis in heap hero and thread dump analysis in fast thread gc log analysis in gc easy you can take the problematic uh, time taking js call or css you can paste it over here and when you click on minify this minifier is going to optimize that time taking javascript call and css 
okay so minifier basically what it is going to do is it is going to remove all the extra spaces duplicates duplicate lines of code everything that you don't need and it is going to give you the optimized js call and css call minifier is going to do a lot other things we are not discussing in detail here we are going to take that in client side performance testing and uh, the other thing is uh, spaghetti code, which is also called uh, inefficient code. When I say inefficient code, right, this is one of the main problem uh, for all the performance problems. Okay, custom code, when someone is developing something on a page, on a module, it is developed in isolation. When I say, when I'm saying isolation, uh, that particular code, is handled with little or no testing is performed, okay, which is so called unit testing or integration testing. You're writing some code, when you run it, you're getting the output. That is what a developer is going to check. But when it comes to the performance aspects, that particular code snippet, how much time it is taking during the compilation, how much time it is taking during the interpretation, how much time it is taking in the JIT compilation phase, or how much time it is taking in GC and how much time overall time it is taking to give you the output. Okay, it is at the unit level. Integration again, this code is integrated with some other component. It has to it has to work collaboratively to get all those numbers. When it is taken to the system level, it has to do parallel computing with all other components. It has to process your code when you have concurrent calls, concurrent requests. In that areas, the we see the problems, we see the degradations on code optimization i mean if the code is not developed in isolation with no testing is done uh, even some of the problems are completely missed in functional testing and they'll become uh, they'll become apparent when you do load testing only when you do load testing you're going to see all the problems one problem of a very badly implemented code is badly implemented threat safety when they say badly implemented threat safety uh, for that, uh, for, for all of this, uh, to understand every performance engineer, I am again telling it to you, a good performance engineer should be a good developer first. Okay, so if you want to understand badly implemented threat safety, it is going to create resource contention, it is going to create deadlocks, and it can cause all the functions to lock, and it is going to give you an error message. I'm not, I am not saying that these issues can be easily solved. These issues can be solved by taking multiple thread dumps, multiple heat dumps. Sometimes you need to look, take the help of GC logs. Sometimes you need to look at the other servers that are already working in parallel with your application servers like database to rightly troubleshoot the problem. Okay. And also coming to the other performance problems, the VMs that you're working, when your application is hosted in some X data center, Okay, your EMs, VMs can also be a problem. Virtualization, virtualized environment configuration, right? Virtualization has so many benefits. It can also increase the complexity of identifying some performance problems. In VMs, you may have dynamic reallocation of resources. When you have this dynamic reallocation, right? Many of the problems are hidden. Okay, you may have resource contention across the VMs that you have. It's not always the problem with the script that you're running, with the environment that you're testing, the application you're testing. It could be also a problem with VMs. So for that VMs, you can also monitor all the data centers of the VMs with dynamic reallocation. They have some set of metrics and you can easily identify the, identify, uh, the performance problems, okay? When I say environment configuration, environment configuration, you have to validate solution designs. You have to know the configurations. If you have frequent problems that are coming up on, on an application after sending it to live, it can be because of load balancing setup. It can be because of firewall configuration. So sometimes, right, uh, you do rigorous testing on a staging environment, on a dedicated performance testing environment, and uh, you give a go ahead on your to your application to send it to live, right? When you're sending this to live, then you start see problems coming up because you're not 
permitted to do testing on production environments. Sometimes, most of the times, it is not possible because you're already testing good in pre-production environment that is a representative of live, or it could be 50% of live, or it could be 1 16th, 1 4th size of your live, validating these configuration changes. So each time when you're sending something, when you're testing something very aggressively, you have to know all the configurations. Firewall implementation, firewall rules that are set, load balancing algorithms, okay? Uh, the, the role of DNS, the role of CDN, okay? If you look at many of the outages, I have, I have referred to this example yesterday. Instagram outage or WhatsApp outage or Facebook outage, they are because of DNS failures. If you go back, look at your environment today, no DNS or CDN is implemented in performance testing environment. So is it making any significant impact on the performance? Yes, it could be. Because uh, DNS are like the phone book of all the domains by just taking your IP address, it is going to do some other process activities. It is going to look for the, your domain very quickly and it is going to give you the content to the user as quickly as possible. In case of DNS, all the 404s, 404 errors can be because of DNS failures. Okay, you can also look at the CDN, DNS. Each one, each one of them has got a big list of metrics where you have to monitor in the prod. Okay, SRS do that. You have to monitor that in the prod. In case of any other failures, uh, I'll tell you how to troubleshoot and what you have to do here. Okay, poorly written code can lead to many problems where the entire application can go down. It can be because of inefficient algorithms. Can we identify inefficient algorithms? We cannot. You have to do code profiling. When you do code profiling, it is going to tell you uh, which method, which problem, which statement, which part of your code, which class, which object is consuming highest amount of memory. Example, functions allocating, occupying the most amount of memory. Types of functions with most of the memory that they're getting allocated, right? Object allocation, object lifetime, call tree, all these things are taken into consideration when you, uh, when you, have, when you identify something like a poorly written code, okay? Inefficient algorithms if you have, poorly written code if you have, um, badly implemented design of your application, bad software architecture. So everything can create a memory leak. It can create an application deadlock. If you're still using older versions of the softwares or integrated legacy systems to the update uh, to the latest version of your application or product, it can also completely drag the performance of your application down. Okay. And also I say I said the database is right. When I say the database right, so most of the, the main challenge here is in the databases. Even if it is a testing environment, even if it is a dedicated performance testing environment, no one of you will get access. If you're working in a JPMC, Bank of America, Morgan Stanley, City, Lloyds Bank, SunTrust, all the BFSA, Interpol, stock markets, capital markets, investments, trading applications, uh, they don't want to reveal the configurations of the data that you want to see, even if it is on test environment. Okay. So when you don't have access to the database, you will not be able to understand what exactly is the problem inside the database. You, to some extent, I would agree that you can collect a big list of metrics and you can see various parameters, okay? Like uh, uh, <coughs> CPU utilization, memory utilizations, cache miss, cache hit, uh, hard passing, soft passing. Then uh, you have a different, different metrics. I mean, from the... Database side, uh, you have a lot of metrics. Uh, again, coming to, for example, coming to the processor, you can monitor percentage processor time, percentage privilege time, percentage user time. So you can you can look at all these things, but the problem here is, uh, if you want to understand the problematic virus, which has missing indexes, you have to you should have access to the database. Missing indexes can completely slow down the performance of your SQL queries. Sometimes they can drag the entire uh, site down. So for that, you have to use some utilities like uh, SQL Profiler, SQL Segment Advisor, 
uh, you need to have uh, different different utilities. You have to run ADDM automatic database diagnostic monitor, for example, on Oracle database. You have to take multiple AWR reports. You need to take active session history report to see uh, what are the problems inside the database. Okay, and most of us, what we don't understand is uh, growth in data. So if you don't see the data. Uh, right uh, the percentage of amount of users increasing the number of hits increasing uh, requests per minute if you take twitter or if you take shopify it is going to handle 50000 requests per minute per, per minute okay per minute or per second giving a response time of 45 milliseconds it is running on ruby on rails okay twitter has moved from ruby on rails to scala whereas shopify is still working on ruby on rails framework which is giving, which is doing 50,000 requests per minute in 45 milliseconds of response time. Okay. When I'm referring to throughput, it is number of requests per minute, number of HTTP requests processed on data web server, number of methods executed on application server, number of SQL queries or stored procedures executed on database server, number of transactions passed per second, TPS. This is all throughput okay if you have, if you see data systems if you're doing some batch ingestion if you do some batch jobs testing data systems basically they tend when you when they are dealing with large amounts of data they tend to degrade over time so every time when you see growth in data you need to develop a plan you need to monitor in all aspects to see what percentage of data is growing on your web application Okay, when you see more amount of traffic coming onto your website within a very short time, the first step is to decide who is accountable for this data growth, what type of users, from which location, what are they doing, what activity is being performed. And if you get all this data right, if you have a plan like that, you can initially plan the storage needs. You can increase your hardware software configurations of all the web app type servers that you have in your environment you need to look at all the possible options from databases to cache implementations and you have to decide the storage accordingly so i'm talking about the traffic spikes here if you're a youtube blogger if you have a food channel if you have it if you're a travel blogger when you upload a video any user any customer from the business point of view end of the day when it is business we generally think of increased traffic when you see increased traffic, increased traffic is a good thing. When you experience, the problem here is when you experience a major traffic spikes, you are going to get so much of other problems. Okay, some, some systems can go down, some systems can uh, stop working, some, some services will automatically stop working with huge volumes of data that is already there on the systems. More number of users are coming more concurrent calls are happening, more number of SQL queries are being executed with the undersized configuration of hardware that you have on your database server. A lot of things that you see. Okay. And coming to the most commonly performed mistake by any of the performance engineers, when the customer doesn't know anything, this is, uh, which is most commonly done by many of the teams, later uh, they realize, but by the time someone realizes it, right, the time, the budget, the project will go to it get most to some other company the business of your company will move out and the opportunities that you get will be less so poor less load assigning a wrong workload doing a load testing with poor load distribution will not you will not only see slow response times when you're doing wrong workload assigning of all the tasks in your application you will see high response times it is not actually high response times you have to understand it is not the way the users are actually accessing the application in prod. Not out of 100 people, 90 people will not click on can't access my account in Gmail. That is not a concurrent operation. The priority of the activity, the priority of that particular task functionality in that application is very, very less, which is 1% out of total number of users you have on your application. How many of the users are actually trying to enable step two verification on daily basis when you open your Gmail. So poor load, poor load distribution, if you're doing this, everything is, you're wasting time, you're wasting your efforts, everything will go wrong. 
incorrectly assigning new visitors, users to some wrong functionalities, doing some multiple rounds of testing, it will give you inaccurate results and it will waste your time. When you do this, the problems will not stop here. People will start working in the wrong places to implement the performance fix, which will give you the new performance problems. And it is going to take some years of time to realize that you are in the wrong place and you have assigned the wrong workload. The same, the same thing applies to selecting a wrong tool. If your tool is not actually capturing, recording everything that you want, then it's a gone case. If you're incorrectly assigning workload to the functionalities in your application, too many people will be on the same server. They're going to experience problems. And the overall system, you'll get so many problems, right? So coming to the configurations also, uh, there's the last bottleneck, I would say, coming to the configurations every time your a performance testing environment is set up right from the scratch, a performance engineer should take part in that to understand how systems can be properly tuned in case when you see problems. Everyone, when they're doing performance testing, they go with default configurations to make the things easy or to get components up and running in the environment, you go with default configurations. They're not right. They're not appropriate all the time for your web application, like the way you have in live production environment. For here, you have to check every setting. It has to be checked. Example, review thread counts. Check the uh, amount of memory given as heap for all the application servers. What are the permissions you have? So you have to check all the configuration parameters that are placed on your web application when you're testing in pre-prod or QA environment, dedicated performance testing environment. DNS queries, I told you, right? DNS configurations, DNS queries make up the majority of the traffic. That's the reason DNS issue can cause so much trouble. And sometimes in case of DNS failures, it will prevent visitors from accessing the website. And it is going to result 404, HTTP 404 is incorrect pathways. Network connectivity can be a problem, right? Firewall efficiency. They are very, very crucial for any web application access and productivity. So you have to monitor DNS. You have to know the configurations on DNS, how they are implemented. You have to know the configuration of firewalls. Simple thing, wf.msc. If you open this one, you have inbound rules and outbound rules. If you want to allow someone to access my server that is installed on my laptop, you have to create an inbound rule, create a new rule. You have to run a program here. Oh, sorry, not a program. You have to create a port open. Okay, then you have to apply this one. You open some port 8080 something. Okay, you click on next. Allow this connection, or you can allow this connection if it is secure. You can also block this connection. When you click on next, I would you can also uh, apply this rule to which users it can be applied. So domain applies when a computer is connected in it, it to its corporate domain private. It is going to get connected to a private network location such as home, working from home or workplace, or it could be a public domain. Give me a minute, please. So I'm sorry. So you can say that uh, domain, private, public. You can you can public when you select public, right? It's it's going to access. It's going to give access to anyone. Okay. If you go back, did I give? No, I did not give anything here. So when you click on a next, it's going to ask. Uh, let's say IAS or something. Access. I'm just doing it for your understanding. So you can see. And the complete things here, right? Apache the common daemon services is running because you have created this one. So you have to check all these options, okay? Uh, these are just a few ways to troubleshoot these types of performance problems, which we commonly don't see, okay? which we don't, we don't care about. Just because we don't have access, we have restricted access, we have limited connectivity to all these areas, okay? 
so and also troublesome uh, third party services right when i say uh, troublesome third party services uh, i am uh, talking about an example ircdc where you when during the login time you it, a lic ad is displayed if that ad is not displayed on your application it, it's not always the problem with the application code application or the database it could be problem with the troublesome third party where you have integrated your application with the ad server lic ad server if you are relying on third party services basically slowdowns are going to happen these slowdowns are out of your control when you have such slowdowns with any of the troublesome third party services you should not touch you must not touch the source code or the other areas which are already working fine in your system you have you have to identify where the problem is from okay your page is loaded your response has been come has been uh, it has been there on the screen page load time is already done all the pages assets are loaded but your, your our application is still waiting for a page uh, from someone else ad server which did not load if users are experience, experiencing problem like that the first step is you have to identify that problem is on your side or is it from the third party okay so if it is a problem from the third party you have to tell them to make some design changes to protect your site from uh, some of the effects that are happening just because of third party services like this uh, so these are all some of the common common problems and the last one could be the problems from uh, the network and load balancers you always have metrics for this one in when i say load balancers right uh, simple exams i will tell you load balancers each load balancing algorithm would require uh, they perform differently with the type of load balancing algorithm that you select least weight connections round robin weighted round robin weighted least connections by default you are going to use round robin okay and network when it comes to network network there will be a so much of network delay you are going to have network delay segment graph anyone know this graph in load runner network delay graph network delay graph what is it saying in load runner it is going to give you the delay time between the source and destination okay network segment delay graph there is another graph like that a network segment i remember so it is going to give you the delay at each node between the source and destination servers between the source and destination you can have multiple nodes the delay between every node you can get the breakup at network segment delay graph you know what is time to first buffer i'm not talking to about time to first byte ttfb is different ttfb is the when you send the request it is the server's first reaction the first byte that you are getting it from the server and you see the response on the web browser okay but whereas ttfb is a graph that is available in load runner where you have server time and network time two metrics when you have high response time when you look at the time to first buffer graph you can easily identify whether the response time the time that it is taking by the application which is so called high response time is it a problem from the server or from the network server time is 6 seconds network time is 2 seconds this graph is going to tell you it is problem from the server not from the network if network time is 7 seconds server time is 1.5 seconds then we can easily identify it is the problem from the network okay so all these things are common common performance problems that we get in many of the performance uh, testing assignments it could be um, i mean it could be sorry it could be many other performance uh, many problems from many systems which are developed with uh, multiple technologies all the problems you see with all the different different languages that are developed that does not the most commonly perform i mean most seen performance bottle performance problems across java applications dotnet applications i mean civil applications citric applications anything but when i am referring to java 
this is something very very important because most of the questions are frequently asked in the interviews in java you know right java.net are the most popular technologies for the application development comparatively java is very popular tens of thousands millions of developers uh, are using them daily java if you take java right it's 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 it, it has been evolved for decades and there are there has been so many frameworks there has been uh, middleware data access uh, technologies protocols built on java if you compare to c c++ and other languages where uh, memory management is uh, manually done by the programmers which means the programmer has to create an object as soon as the task of that program is completed the program the programmer he or she has to destroy the object to reclaim the memory in the languages like c c++ but java right java is self regulating which means it has come up with something called automatic memory management which is a powerful utility called garbage collection which is going to manage the memory which is going to free up the memory on its own automatically whatever the performance problem that you see in java based applications whenever you have a problem that is going to happen if it is impacting the business okay you have to look at some various places especially from the jvm monitoring especially uh, from the code side from the middle layer middleware inspecting the code all these things uh, there are some popular problems uh, some performance problems in java uh, performance test engineers and java developers and administrators encounter and there are few things that we can recommend and it depends again on the situation okay now most of the problems we always get from memory okay when i say memory i am going back to the same point inefficient code which is also called spaghetti code so most of the problems that you see are uh, out of memory errors right whenever i say out of memory errors they happen from jvm okay whenever say whenever i say out of memory errors they do happen from uh, jvm when you have high object creation rate when gc is not able to do its job as expected when you have a problematic objects when you have premature promotion of all the objects when you when you have uh, even for a small amount of code uh, the number of, the more number of objects getting created each one having uh, very high size each object is taking so much amount of memory very soon it get filled up with objects in at certain point the gc will not be able to do the reclamation of memory as expected and uh, when memory is completely filled with objects there will be no space left for the new objects that are coming in it cannot accommodate and it will show you out of memory it will throw an out of memory exception these out of memory exception can happen from the end generation old generation meta space you can have different different out of memory exceptions depending upon the runtime data area you have so many runtime data areas different runtime data areas in jvm java jvm so <clears throat> any area of the any memory area in the runtime data area is full you are going to get java dot lang dot out of memory exception error okay so even uh, you see different problems just because of excessive garbage collection when i say excessive garbage collection you know when the more when the gc is going to happen much more frequently if more number of times the gc is going to happen it means that the objects are not getting deleted from the heap okay so i am going to tell you one by one and coming to the third bottleneck from the java performance application java performance application c is improper caching if you don't do this one you will see lot many bottlenecks these are from something like from the memory i'm going to explain you each one do not worry coming to the threads right you are going to see thread you are going to take multiple thread dumps you are going to look at the stack traces you are going to look at the waiting threads blocked threads threads which are continuously running hung threads all these threads why you are why you are looking at because you are going to see resource contention you are going to get deadlocks you are going to get grid locks 
uh, you are going to get, uh, you have request execution, wait time, uh, excessive use of thread synchronization, all these things are, are going to create uh, deadlocks. In order to identify the deadlocks, in order to identify uh, resource contentions, in order to identify high response times, if the applications applications uh, applications are always getting crashed, is becoming unresponsive. If you see high resource utilizations on the application server, it's high time to take thread dumps. And this is where you are going to understand what are the different threads that are creating the problem, are the reason for the deadlock, all these things. Okay, so when you say threads, right, it is going to talk about uh, deadlocks. When you say deadlocks, uh, you're also seeing resource contention. I'll not go much into that, okay, because this is a separate session in thread dump analysis where we are spending some four to five sessions. Same applies to the memory part, heap dump analysis where we are taking four sessions, okay, and coming to the other problems, you, when you have these problems, you can also see the problems with the databases. When I say databases, simple thing, anyone can no one of you tell you, tell me one simple data, da database bottleneck when you're doing load testing? Missing indexes. And? Uh, query, uh, query optimization is, has not been done properly. Have you ever encountered something like this? No one? Let me see if I'm able to connect. I want to show you one specific thing. You are able to see my screen, right? I connected to one. Uh... Yes, yes. Is my SQL server okay? You can see the client connections. You can see the connection limit here. Do you see this one? You're able to see that, right? Threads connected, threads running, threads created. Yes, no? Yes. Okay. So running out of connections is like the application is using all your connections. And uh, when they say you cannot increase the connection limit just to increase the availability and scalability, you cannot do that. That's that's actually the decision has to be taken very wisely because simply uh, increasing the connection pool, simply increasing the thread pool, simply increasing the connection pool when you are getting some errors, it's not going to improve the performance by 0.001%, not going to improve the response times, but it is going to increase your throughput. Okay, when you're increasing something, when you're doing scaling, when you're doing increase the connection limits, when you're doing when you're increasing the thread pools, application pools, you also need to check if the response times are within the acceptable limits. When you don't have that, why are you increasing all these things unnecessarily is the primary question. Right? So you, if you can see here, a uh, simple dashboard, you can see, uh, what is what is the rate at which you can uh, uh, see other things are continuously happening? For example, you can see selects per second, you can see inserts per second, you can see creates per second. When a test is running, right, you can see all these things when you have access. Client connections, you can see the limit. See, when, when the connection limit is completely used, you will see this running out of database connections. 
okay this is one thing i would like to show you and performance reports also it's very easy it's not like taking awr ESH reports high load sql statements if you click on state uh, statement analysis it is automatically queries the performance and it is going to each query it is going to tell you how many full table scans it has how many times it has executed how many errors you got what is the time what is the row sent average rows total rows all these things you can get see uh, you, i mean I'm, I'm saying that memory used by the user it, it, it has some automatic querying uh, methodology which can when you click on this it's going to uh, if you want to know the full table scans as soon as you click on this one it's going to give you uh, the in informations like this list it is going to list all the statements that have performed a full table scan okay so this is one thing someone is asking a question i'm not a uh, regular problem in our systems okay table state logs inserts latency okay so this is one thing i would like to highlight and coming to uh, running out of db connections they can happen just because of uh, uh, slow db calls slow db calls is different from high load sql statements okay slow db calls can be because of also the connection problems connection drops connection leaks okay when i say connection leaks no one no one uh, are going to talk about connection leaks you know what is a connection leak <clears throat> Okay, we'll talk about that later. We are running out of time. So, finally, from the application code, this is a this is a very big one. Okay, when I come here, uh, we have to talk a lot about uh, Java code level issues. All the code level errors will impact uh, the performance of your application. Okay, uh, and you can also get uh, app server bottlenecks here. Java application server bottlenecks. All the bottlenecks that you see here uh, are just because of uh, poorly uh, developed code. And the last one could be from the uh, infrastructure. Infrastructure level monitoring is something which you have to take care. Infrastructure when i say infrastructure all the server related problems it, i'm not talking specific to one application server uh, i'm talking about web server app server and database server related problems and now someone has already answered this question network latency and connectivity problems Okay, so when I am talking about out of memory errors, if I talk about one by one out of memory errors, this is the most commonly seen error, which is called Java dot lang dot out of memory error. This is the exception you see Java dot lang dot out of memory error. Okay, so this is an indication that your application is trying to add more data to the memory, but there is no additional room for it. Out of memory error will directly stop the users from everything. It is going to result in failures. The application server cannot, or the application cannot recover from this out of memory error. And uh, each time you see this, right? When a question is asked like this, what do you do when you see an out of memory error? I'm going to increase my heap size. You're right. But increasing the heap size is Optimizing the performance of your application. Is it giving you the acceptable response times? Is it giving you the acceptable resource utilizations? No. If you're getting an out of memory error, when you're running a test for two hours, if you're getting an out of memory, memory error in first 30 minutes, if you're increasing the heap size from 4 GB to 8 GB, it is going to postpone your out of memory error. Instead of getting your out of memory error in the first 30 minutes, you will be getting it in one hour or one hour 50 minutes, but you, you cannot avoid this error. There can be so many reasons why you are getting out of memory error. Okay, because if you have undersized heap memory in the JVM, if the if you have undersized young generation, if you have undersized older generation, okay, uh, if you if you have problematic objects in the hidden space, if the survivor survivor spaces. Objects are if they are not surviving garbage collection, 
so there could be different different problems so if you have an out of memory error you have to take multiple heap dumps multiple thread dumps and you have to um, identify which are the problematic objects which objects are creating the problem all these things you have to uh, completely look into okay jvm is configured to handle its normal load when any of the node goes down the other node will need to handle the additional workload if you have a spike in incoming traffic spike in application what will happen the load can be easily triggered and you will get a out of memory exception very soon the, for that reason you have to consider a load balanced server cluster where each of the jvm is configured to handle its normal load simple one one node goes down the other node which is already up and running it has to handle the additional workload when the memory configured in the jvm is not sufficient to handle the increased workload out of memory exception is what you see and programming errors when i say programming errors all these things happen just because of programming errors inefficient code i don't directly make a blame statement on the development team knowingly or unknowingly when they are collaboratively working together you have, depending upon the exercising that is going to happen on each and every layer of your infrastructure things do happen a memory leak in the application can be caused by a programming error because the java garbage collector is not able to reclaim the memory it is not able to delete the unreferenced unreachable and dead objects all this terminology is same if a program if a code keeps adding memory to the heap example continuously growing hash table you are going to get an out of memory error so if you ask me what is the fix either you have to increase the heap one 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 thing is that is a valid statement but it is not going to improve the performance okay you have to limit you have to look at each and every individual memory areas that are available for example uh, if you look at my dizon article here one minute please okay if you look at here you also need to find out which area in engine generation is filling fast any generation for example if eden is getting filled with objects very quickly in eng generation okay or survival features are getting filled up with objects very quickly or if your if your older generation is is undersized or if your perm gen which is also called meta space from java jdk 8 is undersized you are going to get memory problems you need to find out the excessive memory usage to find that out to find to find excessive memory usage you have to take heap dumps from the jvm you have to analyze the dump using a tool like eclipse memory analyzer identify the objects which are taking so much amount of memory then you have to fix the code level issues that are causing memory leaks okay and when when you talk about excessive garbage collection uh, i told you right this can happen for a lot many things i mean again code level problems what you have to do for best performance garbage collection should be taking a very small amount of less cpu time when the gc is running your cpu utilization should be less than 10% if it is more than 20% cpu time is mainly used on garbage collection it means application has a significant memory related performance problem that must be corrected so you have to configure jvm's memory to a large i mean it has to be large uh, to achieve the desired performance so if you have bigger sizes of eng generation older generation and meta spaces right if the memory area is so big the gc will definitely it is going to take a lot of time if the memory areas are small they are going to less amount of time if you want to clean a room which is with full of garbage if you want to clean a garbage tin it takes less time if you want to clean a truck with, with which is full of garbage it takes a one day if you want to clean a tin it goes to take minutes of time simple so you have to track instances of gc 
time taken for GC, percentage time spent in GC. These are all some of the important metrics. Uh, high GC pass times, you'll need to look for the high GC pass times. How many minor GCs, major GCs, full GCs happened. So all these things you have to look at. You also need to look at the threads which are taking CPU and you have to drill down accordingly. Coming to the caching, right? Caching, you must be knowing it. It's a duplication of having everything in that and it is going to uh, read, I mean, it is for faster reading of data into memory, right? So suboptimal memory configurations for caching, uh, I mean, default configurations can lead to more GC passes, more number of the time, more number of times the GC can pass and it could affect application processing. So misconfiguration of caching will lead to so many problems. Example, objects are cached, which are stateful in nature. Uh, so when caching is not properly set, a recently used object could be mistakenly removed from the cache. Again, it is going to take room for a new object, resulting in cache miss. Okay, so implementation of cache, badly imp implementation of cache, improper caching is going to give you so many other problems. So for that, you have to monitor the cache size continuously, get alerted, monitor cache hit, cache miss ratios to track the success of caching process. And you also need to look at synchronization of distributed caching that is going to happen in multiple servers. All these things are possible in APM tools. You need to have complete access to that. When it comes to threads, deadlocks are going to happen. No doubt about it. So when I say deadlocks, right, this is a very big word. We're going to talk about that deadlocks and resource contentions. To identify all these things, you have to take multiple thread dumps, the frequency of Taking a thread dumps also matters a lot. Okay. Databases, you have to constantly monitor. So, okay. Coming to the threads, what you have to do from your side is monitor the status of threads in the JVM. You have to look at the count of threads that are running, blocked, and they are in block, deadlocked state. You can use Java performance monitoring tools, which will help you to detect blocked threads, deadlocks. You can identify the exact module and the line of code where the lock, locking is happening with the help of stack traces. And that stack traces are available in thread dump analysis. Running out of database connections, I have already shown you. So you have to continuously monitor the connections to the database. For example, total connections, active connections. And when, I, when you track the connection pool metrics, how many of them are allocated, how many of them are freed, how many of them are closed. You can correlate all these things to get the visibility uh, of the connection delays, uh, waiting requests uh, to see what is the problem on the database. And coming to the database calls, right? Database calls, um, it's a it go, it's going to happen just because of slow queries. When developing an application, uh, developers, what they do is they focus on getting the functionality right. They don't worry about the performance. Same thing applies to database queries. Whenever a SQL developer is writing a query, they are going to validate whether that query is returning the correct results. The query, these queries, they are not designed optimally. I mean to say, you are getting the output. That query can also take three to five seconds there itself in the database. When you are achieving achieving a response time of three seconds. When a single query of a particular transaction is taken directly 3.5 seconds from the database execution side, how can you achieve three seconds of acceptable response time when you're testing with 5,000 users or 10,000 users? So you have to look at the problematic queries from the database level itself, okay? So unused indexes, uh, you have to analyze database queries, you have to plan database sizing, you have to look at the configuration uh, to get the consistent performance. And there is a vast range of, there are vast, wide range of uh, database monitoring tools available to identify, fix missing indexes, optimize the data. In Java code profiling, I told you, right? This is a very big subject where it is going to, where you are going to talk about uh, high method call counts, slowest methods, CPU intensive methods. Uh, you're going to look for slow database queries, excessive wait time, methods with network activity, methods generating high CPU, methods with disk activity, all these things are basically done at the code level, application code, application server bottlenecks, again, application server bottlenecks, 
you have to do something called the JVM monitoring. I'm going to share you the doc. JVM monitoring, uh, you have to work on uh, so many things. I mean, when I say monitoring rights, uh, when coming to the monitoring, you always have three levels of monitoring. Okay. Level one is uh, request level monitoring. Someone asked me how to troubleshoot the problem. When I say request level, rate of incoming requests, rate of in, uh, transactions processed, system resources information for the requests processed is what I'm going to monitor there. Okay. When I say level two monitoring, I'm, I'm doing component level. When I say component level, this is where actually the problem determination is going to happen. When I say problem determination, here you're going to monitor EJBs, you're going to monitor servlets, you're going to monitor JSPs, DNS, CDN, load balancer. You are going in specific with the component that is part of your environment in the underlying infrastructure. Okay. And the level two is, what is level two? Level three. Level three is method level. When I say method level, right? Method level, which method level, reason for deadlocks, problematic code. This is called tracing. Don't ask me what is tracing. Okay. Tracing, you can add methods, trace information for, for problem determination. And uh, you can increase uh, some of the few things that I did from my JVM practices, I'm going to tell you. You can increase web container, max key palace. You can increase thread pool. You can increase database connection pool. You can increase minimum XMS, initial heap size, XMX, maximum heap size. You can disable explicit GC. You can also stop GC happening explicitly to for increased response times. And there is one uh, specific thing called recompile JSPs and ASPs. So whenever a page is developed, the active server page is, is in ASP.NET, JSP is Java server pages for Java applications. Whenever a page is ready, you need to pre-compile pre them in the IDE to see how resources are utilizing that execution of that JSP or ASP and uh, how much time they are taking. So this pre-compiling is going to help you <coughs> To shorten the time, I mean, to, you can optimize that JSP or ASP that is developed at the very early stages of development. They can directly optimize it there itself. If you don't get to know the time that it is going to take of the JSP or ASP, it is going to give you increased response times. Okay. If you have too many short living objects, you can know that by pre compiling, you can know that by doing some code profiling directly by the IDE. Okay, you can identify top methods, top objects, hot methods by count. You can see the average heap size. Com you can compare the average heap size. You can compare the throughput and you can see the requests. Uh, with what value is increasing with what? And you, you can do that. And the last one uh, point of the session, what I want to highlight, I want to tell you is, I want to tell you about the troubleshooting. When I say troubleshooting, many of the people come and say that we don't have access to the databases. We don't have access to the actual pre-prod environments. We don't have access to the monitoring tools. Then how are you analyzing or troubleshooting the problem that you're seeing in the question here? You know the importance of logs when you try to work on any application problem, right? The .NET application, Java application, troubleshooting, debugging. Uh, you have to analyze the logs, okay, using various tools. Example, uh, you have Logly, uh, which is a very good solar winds Logly. We are actually covering that in this course content. Uh, logs play a very key role in root cause analysis. If your application has a problem, right, logs can directly identify the cause and it will help you to find a solution. They contain the logs contain important troubleshooting data, including the warning messages, informational messages, error messages, stack traces, and sometimes memory dumps. 
So these logs will directly provide complete insights on trends on your application behavior. And how to analyze the logs is the question again here. Manually reading the logs is okay for modern applications, but large applications can generate thousands of events per second. You cannot read it manually. Okay, so for that, what you have to do is you have to gather the information about the problem, which means uh, you have to collect diagnostics data that might be relevant to the problem, take logs, take stack traces and bug reports from the functional team. Uh, what is it? Gather information about the problem. This is the troubleshooting actually. Okay, which means you're collecting all the information. Uh, please don't mind, I'm going to close the session in another five minutes. I know it would be difficult to understand all these things, but as this is a technical concept, this is something which you commonly face in all the assignments in day-to-day -day activities. So when coming to troubleshooting, right, I'll also write it here because I will upload this video. Troubleshooting and uh, debugging. When they say gather information about the problem, collect diagnostics data, take the help of APM, look at the metrics, look for the behavioral patterns, the trends of graphical representation, collect all the diagnostic data which is relevant to the problem, take the help of logs. Logs cannot be, you cannot read them manually. You need to take the help of log analyzers. You need to stream your logs in a tool like SolarWinds Logly. It is going to give you the complete information. Take the help of stack traces. Take the help of bug reports from the functional team to identify the problem. Then the second thing is you are identifying the cause. When you say identifying the cause, you have to use the details of your diagnostics data to find out where and why the problem has occurred. Okay, you can repeat the user actions manually, then take the log, search log, search logs for relevant events, use debugging tools to locate the problem in your code. Okay, so then the last one is you have to find and find and implement a, a, a permanent solution. When I say uh, permanent solution, right? <clears throat> I'm sorry. You have to create a fix, not only that is going to resolve your problem, but by introducing, uh, by incorporating that solution, it has to, it should not bring new performance problems. It should not impact the new other existing functionalities, which are already working with acceptance per acceptable performance. And it should permanently fix the problem. My final question, answer to all of you is, avoid dirty and quick fixes just for the sake of release that is happening today night or tomorrow night. That is going to bring up so many escalations very soon. So you need to find and, perm you need to find and implement a permanent solution, which is not only improving the performance or giving the desired performance is a secondary thing. When you're incorporating a fix like that, you should, it should not create new performance problems because you are already running out of time. So you have to resolve exceptions. You have to understand the stack traces uh, because when you use uh, Logly, I'm using Logly at, the, at this point of time. So when you give the status codes, it's going to give you, uh, there is something called exception dot stack trace field. It's going to tell you uh, where the problem occurs on which line and you can see the failed transactions, you can see the HTTP status codes, you can, I mean, you can uh, trace the transactions. All these things are quite common. Example, uh, monitoring and debugging on Azure. Uh, Microsoft Azure is a complete cloud, com cloud computing environment, right, for running applications, database servers, virtual servers, other assets. Using Azure Monitor, you can collect, analyze logs, metrics, other telemetry data, which can effectively monitor everything that you need. And it can also help us to troubleshoot cloud resources. And Azure is having, AWS is having, GCP is having, 
so many several solutions for searching and analyzing this data, including uh, application insights metrics, and uh, you have they have their own inbuilt log analytics for logs. For more advanced analysis, what we are doing is we are streaming our logs to a service like Logly, which is from SolarWinds. Okay, so that's all for today. I know this is so short, but uh, this is something that will be a common technical session which is going to help many of the fellow performance engineers right from one year to 10 years, 15 years. So that's all for today. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time. And it's so nice of you and nice talking to you. Thank you so much.